what's going on, man? Again, we're live in the studio here at X1023 Palm Beach, the base that ate Miami. That's what it's all about, man. We've been a part of that history. We grew up in this history. We've been on radio 20 years or so, and uh, we've been there since Luke and Splat Pack and all these big artists that came out, man. All Beatmaster Clay D, no Uncle doubt. Al, uh, uh, Sha D. I mean, we can go down and on and on and on and on, man, but it's great music, man. It, it, it's always going to be around. I don't know how many years later you can still pack a dance floor with that music. So that's how we get down. X1023 style Baba Lou's, baby. It's all about the bass that ain't Miami. I'm Richie Rich, my uh, brother DJ, DJ Ray. Ray. Make sure you listen and now every you night. Know. X1023 does it big, always bringing it back. We never forget where we came from, baby. It's the roots that We've been doing radio in Orlando, Miami, Palm Beach, man. We love bass music. It's, it's a part of the history here. It's a part of hip-hop culture. A lot of people don't know that. But this is where it came from, the South, and this is where we represent. Why? Because that's the base that ate Miami. <laughs> Peace. Now you know. All right, guys. Um, basically, the first question that I have for you in regards to this documentary is the influence of Latinos in that base era. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. You gotta be kidding me. Mami El Negro. La Flaca, yeah, DJ Laz, a lot of people influenced. Latinos oh, were yeah. definitely in it, man. I mean, because look, think about it. Where was bass uh, originated from, right? It, it came from hip hop, from rap. It came from, and in the region, South Miami, Miami, baby. And what's in the South? Latinos, tropical, beautiful Latinas. And, and, to, and to get technical, I mean, <laughs> uh, DJs are gonna understand this, and people that really understand BPM wise, BPMs are beats per minute. The tempo of bass music the was speed. Was, the speed of it was so quick. Merengue was also very quick, very speedy like this. So it's very easy to intertwine with that kind of a bass beat, a merengue hook or a merengue lyric. Like Mami and Negro or uh, Abusadora was in one. Yeah. And what he's trying to say technically is we like to see Latin women shake their bootiness. Yes. Oh, yeah, morena. Yes. We like to see culo shake. Yes. And that's yes. really the technical. In layman's terms. Yeah, that's very technical. <laughs> that's why it's called booty shaking music, right? Yeah, man. Exactly. Now, another thing is, um, you guys are, uh, give me a little story about how you guys got into the music, where you guys come from, so oh, the, the people geez. out there can know. All right, well, we're Cuban by descent. Yeah. First, the earth cooled, and then the dinosaurs came. And right? they got too big and fat. Yeah, right, whatever. And then the Cubans came. Right. <laughs> We, we, you know, we, we came down here, we, we were from New York, uh, originally we were born, born in New York, York but and then we're South Florida. My involved. father and mother moved us, as, as we were small, down to Miami, and they figured out way too many Cubans down there, so they moved up to Orlando, <laughs> and that's where we rested. Yeah, Pops didn't want us talking like uh, Scarface, Al Pacino. So. Oh, yeah, city! <laughs> Consorte! Yeah, I'll tell you something, man, okay? Okay. Let me tell you something. You, you need, need people, people like me. me. Yeah, okay. All right, now check this out. So in Orlando, we started break dancing. And from break dancing... We always love music. We always love hip-hop, but we, we love break dancing. From breaking into... Instead of dancing to the music, we ended up, ended up playing the music. Yeah, we started collecting records for our break dancing stuff. Yeah, and yeah, as yeah. we collected more records and more records, by the time break dancing started kind of phasing, winding down, we had this big collection of records with nothing to do with them. A couple of friends of ours are like, yo, I'm having a birthday party. Bring oh, your records. Shout out. To my man Eddie Mix and BPM Records and Carl no Drew doubt. Records in Carl Miami. Drew. We used to go, we used to drive from Orlando down to the MIA to get the hottest records. Yep. Uncle Sam. And, and since nobody had them in Orlando, we had to come down to Miami to get them. They were like, we got the records in Miami. We come back to Orlando, like, man, wow, did you BPM. get those hot records? Car Jewel, that was great. Uh, we're not that old. Yeah, okay. Yeah, a record shop, and then you got the beauty salon right there. <laughs> <laughs> That was the bomb! Incredible. Anyway, check this out. So we had these hot records. They were like, come over and play your records. So we did. And little by little, we started adapting to the turntables to play the records. And then from there, uh, a radio, Power 86 bought a radio station in Orlando and moved some staff up there. 102 and, Jams. In case you don't know. 101.9. And uh, we invited them to the club we were DJing at at the time. And they loved us so much. We four turntables. Back flipping on the yeah, mic, whatever, whatever. break dancing with the turntables, and uh, yeah, yeah, and they decided to hire us. Hire us, so we, we were and right from there. there the we started learning all the boards, all the techniques, and from Orlando we moved from 102 Jams to Power 96 in Miami. Then from there we came to right here X1023 West Palm. So that, that's how I go. And West Palm Beach, a lot of people don't know, had a lot of bass records that were coming out of here and they were getting played and. And, uh, One of the biggest, Miami. Black Pack, Black Pack. Yeah. Peanut Butter Jelly, yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, so, there's some hits out of Palm yeah, Beach. Yeah, Palm Beach County got to go now. They ride out that 561. So, yeah, they were doing that thing. 